this Toshiba laptop has an issue with the video. When you turned it on, it would have all kinds of colors on the screen. It would be bouncing up and down. It would ghost in and out. It would fade in and out with the white screen. It's like what it's showing right now. And if you have an external monitor, it would work fine with the external monitor. Your screen on the laptop would still be the same, though. So what you need to do, don't try replacing the screen. The screen is not the issue. The screen is going to be the motherboard itself. And I don't have the video of taking it apart, but I'm going to tell you that you need to take all the screws off the bottom of the laptop. And then when you get that part done, there's this little strip here. You lift it up, and it comes off real easy. You got one, two, three screws there to take off, and your lap this keyboard will come up this way, you pull it out, and you fold it forward to you, you have a ribbon cable there. And what you're going to do is take that connector there, and you're going to lift it up and pull out the ribbon cable, very gently. Now you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven screws, I believe. And then you take that connector there loose. You disconnect where the speaker wire is. You pull that up. You leave the power switch there on. And when you get all that done, you'll be able to snap it off from the side. It's going to just separate it. And it'll come out really easy. And you'll hear a bunch of pops. Um, your DVD ROM will be able to slide out as well. When you get to this point, here's your motherboard. And you can see in the video, I've already done the baking of it. So I was doing a disassembly video of that part. That's why you see the plastic moved around. And there's only one, two, or three, four screws, I believe, on this. But you need to take and remove the ribbon cable. You, know, you remove the hard drive. Remove that ribbon cable there and point that. And if you have to replace your DC jack, there's where your DC jack is. If you take that out, you just got to take that two screws there and the bracket comes up. And you'll be able to just pull the, the wire up and you follow it back to the back of the motherboard. And that's how you replace that cable. It's really easy, it just presses in. But anyway. So when you get that all done, it doesn't take much longer to take in, remove this motherboard. And the screen, once you get it done, won't be erratic like it was before. So... Remove your power. You got one screw, two screw, and the third screw in the view to the left of that silver bracket. You remove that ribbon cable. You can now remove the cable for that. Be gentle for this cable because that is your video connection for your screen. I'm just going to take out the hard drive. And you have to take the Wi-Fi card out. Remember to note where the wire is. The black is on the bottom, the white is on the top, and there's two screws holding that board down. If you remove those two screws, the board will spring up, and it's just a, you just pull it out from there. It's a very easy removal. You also have to remove that connector there for the power for your adapter. You got screw there for your CPU fan. You want to make sure you take that off. And once you get all these screws, there's that screw there I was talking about. You lift up from the right of that laptop motherboard, and you pull it out, and that's what you see. This is the bottom of your motherboard. And you want to take and remove the memory chip. Those are the ones I'm pulling out right there. They've got clips on the side, and they just kind of slide out should not matter much what direction they go in 
in what order they go in the next time. They have a slot on and you need to remove the battery and you need to remove the processor heatsink and they're numbered one two three and four and you want to take them off in that order one two three and four remove this connector too for the fan as well and the battery you're just going to get like a flat tip screwdriver and go underneath it and it'll pop out Positive is facing towards you right now, so you don't get it backwards. Otherwise, it's kind of hard to take off when you put it all back together. So I'm taking out screw number one. These are all spring-loaded, and they stay within each self, so you won't have that screw loose. There's number three. And here's number four. And while you have your computer out, your motherboard out, you can always take and clean the processor fan. You will also need a heat compound grease to put on the processor. That's the thing in the middle there. To put it back on, it'll transfer the heat better. And the it has a locking tab there that you need a slotted or a straight tip, flat tip screwdriver to turn it. And you turn it counterclockwise or to the left all the way. And the processor will come out. This gold tab here, you need to put it in that slot back how you're taking it out. Otherwise, it won't work right. Now, the battery like I said it's it would take a little bit to get it out and if you press on this contact here it won't do anything but it will come out you just gotta use a little bit of force and it'll pop right out don't break your battery connector though so I got it out Make sure you keep that battery away from dogs and animals and cats and babies that can be swallowed. Now what the problem is with this laptop is that chip I'm touching right there. And what's called is BGA. And it's ball grid array. And they have all these little balls of solder on the bottom of the chip. And what you're going to do once you take the processor and stuff off this is the uh, computer fan by the way you can clean it while you have it all out I would suggest it but once you have the processor out the motherboard out um, I wanted to make mention don't take the plastic off of this because we're going to put this in the oven you're actually going to bake your laptop. And I'm talking about the BGA part of this. As a home user, you're not going to go out and buy a $1,000 unit to repair this $200, $300 laptop. You're going to just take and do as I demonstrate in the video. As somebody that's doing this as a business, I can understand. Don't leave me a comment and ask me why I'm telling people to put this in their oven. This is not an electrical microwave. This is an oven. You're going to use it for 10 minutes at 385 degrees. And you're going to bake this motherboard. You need to take the processor out, though, before you put it in the oven. What it's called is ball grid array. And it's just balls of solder underneath the chip. And what happens over time, as it overheats, it causes little solder connection to not make the connections and you can see that you do have a lot of small components on this board but we need to focus next on taking that processor out and I'll show you how to do that here it's just a small sliding screwdriver and 
and once you turn it to the, all the way to the left the processor will shift up and you'll see it when it happened and it would just come right out like that there's no force behind it whatsoever now this is just a socket you don't have to have it but I use it I prop up the laptop motherboard on top of this that way I have heat going underneath it and I don't want the components and stuff touching the pizza pan and that's what I'm using just an old pizza pan so I'm using the heated oven and like I said before 385 degree Fahrenheit for 10 minutes once you stick it in the you'll see here and tell it to go bake 385 tell it to start now it's preheating the oven and I'm going to stick this motherboard while it's preheating in the oven and the, the plastic on the bottom of the motherboard will curl back up because the glue is released so don't worry about that so and if you do need to put your vent on it will have a little older if you're doing this at the business and you're trying to do it as a home business I would not suggest putting it in your oven on a, con on a continuous basis if you're just doing it just one time you're fine don't worry about it it'll be safe I this is the second motherboard I've done in this oven so put your timer on your microwave tell it to start turn your exhaust on and wait for 10 minutes for this thing to be done now your timer has gone off turn off your oven and your motherboard will be very hot it's just you know like anything that you bake in your oven it's going to be hot so at this point try not to bump it because any connection could be cross-haired and whatnot just be gentle about it wait for it to cool down um, and that's about it you can see here the plastic did curl back which is fine it had nothing to do with the operation of the laptop which is there to protect it from the keyboard so once the motherboard is cooled down you should be able to put the processor back on the heat sink back on and put the battery back on as you see in this clip here I show that the plastic has curled back from the heat which is okay it's not going to bother anything but we need to put that processor back in you also need to put the memory sticks back in I've already put the battery in and if I'm taking too fast or so doing it too fast for you you can always pause the video as it's going along so it doesn't affect you for taking it apart and had audio before for this but it failed to record so I'm doing it over it so now you turn it and you're locking your the processor in and it's kind of stiff so and next is the you can either put your memory sticks in or your RAM, whatever you want to call it. At this point, I would put the heat seat and grease on it. Some people don't. I'm just going to stick it back in there the way it is. Here's your memory stick. Like, this, like I said before, it does not matter whether blue's on top, green's on bottom, green's on bottom. You know, just put it in the slot. And there is a slotted hole there. You can see there make sure that lines up and press it down firmly until it locked in its tab it's very easy to remove and install next we're going to put the 
processor heat sink back in its location you want to make sure you plug in the fan for this again I've done that mistake many 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 times where I forgot to do that the screws on this you want to do it in reverse order you want to put four three two and one tighten it in that order and like I said don't forget to plug that back in so once I get this all seated in I'm going to put it back into the computer I'm going to reseat my connections for the video I got my connections set for the power button and we're just going to test it turn it on and see what it looks like got a power light that's good and if you remember what your screen looked like before now look at your screen you've just fixed your computer it will say this message here um, that's just because you removed the CMOF battery it'll be okay so remove power and you'll need to reassemble the computer back how you had it before with the keyboard and the mouse pad and all that. Thanks for watching. Any questions or comments? Leave them in the comment section below.